My name is Don Vosberg, and I'm one of the presenters today. I'm a product ma on the product management team for SUSE Manager, and along with me today is Stefan Baylert, who is actually my boss. <laughs> so I, I have I have my boss, and my boss's boss here with me today. So that means that I should behave as expected. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to behave well. But I'm going to be myself. But um, this uh, originally on the schedule, uh, Stacy Miller was going to be uh, co-presenting with me, but she had some family emergency in Texas. Uh, her her son and he's doing much better, but she was unable to travel with us. So so we recruited Stefan to help. Uh, take her place, and he's going to guide us through the start of today's presentation. So, Stefan, I'm going to turn Thank it Thank you, Don. Good to know that I'm the boss. I was not aware. <laughs> 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 no. Um, I'm happy to be here with you. To be awesome. honest, uh, I'm sad that Stacy is not here. So, we didn't rehearse that. So, if anything is unclear, just ask questions in between. I was asked to remind you, please raise your hand, take the microphone, or we have to repeat it so it gets recorded. And it's a big room, so if you're in the back, I'm no longer the youngest 20 year young, so speak up loudly if you are not going to the microphone. So we will talk today a little bit about Susan Manager and what, yeah, why should you care about it? Why do you need Susan Manager? In case you don't know it, you need it, yes. If you have any Linux system running, you need it. We will talk then about what's new in 5.0 because we have quite a few things that changed. Some more obvious, some less. And Don will guide us through that because he knows all of them by heart, has tested everything there and helped us to develop that. We will talk a little bit on Outlook on the roadmap, very short, I promise. And then, of course, what everybody is waiting for. A demo. And we hope it works the way it is, because no, it no, will be we, live. It's not, we hope. We will show you. Yeah, right. it's a live yeah. demo. You will see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, why should you care? What is Susan Manager? You have heard in the keynotes, any Linux. And I don't know, raise your hands. Who of you has only one Linux vendor and system in your uh, company? <laughs> oh, okay, no. okay, okay. A and the follow-up question is, is that SUSE? <laughs> yeah. No, okay, yeah. Because if it's not, perhaps you're in the wrong <laughs> session. Yeah, no, no, definitely not, because we can manage all of them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Even from those that are not green. Really? Yellow, blue, red, violet. I always thought, you know, green is good. Draw your own conclusions about the other colors. <laughs> <laughs> we have some red here. That doesn't yeah. mean it's bad. It's just so we have it's contrast. It's persimmon, actually. Yeah. It's, it's not really red. <laughs> you know, <laughs> colors and names of colors. So our mission is relatively simple. We don't care what Linux you have. As long as we can support it, and it's an enterprise Linux, we support it. We help you to secure it. We help you to audit what you have in your company. We help you to upgrade. And if you have ever tried to upgrade different vendor systems or even from the same vendor a different version with an upgrade of the upgrade stack, you know how complicated these things are. We help you to monitor what you have because upgrading, installing, deploying, which we all can, is one thing. You also want to know so you, what is going on in your company in your infrastructure, on your systems, so that you can manage them in the good way and in the best way. And, not mentioned here, we want to make your life easy. As administrators, as CIO, 
as compliance officer, and I said it, on any Linux system. I will go into that a little bit later. But there are also constraints. Let's be honest on that. Managing everything, what does this mean? Do we new containers? Where do we fit in that whole world of new Kubernetes, AI, and everything else? We are working Linux systems. We are not managing containers. If you have containers running in the Kubernetes world, there are better tools to do that. Let's be clear on that. And that's good. Because while one tool fits a lot of cases, there are also differences. We are not doing Windows systems because that's a whole different concept. And we think that it's better to have a specific tools for managing Windows systems and a specific tools to manage the Linux world. We want to help you. We integrate with the various tools that exist on various levels. And you will see we have done some work on that. But there's also plans for more on that. But before we go into what's new in 5.0, it's a multi-Linux world. I said this, and I said there's different colors. <coughs> I'm not going into the various colors. You see here a list. And it's as up-to-date as possible. You see a few soon coming and enabled clients that we will have. The list is changing regularly. New versions are coming from various products. You know, there is that slash. You may have heard earlier, Service Pack 6 is coming. We will support it, of course, all versions of it. You have newer versions coming from Slim Micro. You have Liberty. Ubuntu, I had somebody at the booth recently asking about 2404 coming soon, not there yet, it was released recently, we enable that. And of course we have the... Do you think it was released in April of 2024? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going into that. <laughs> it takes a while. We have many systems and many parts also in the Uyuni project where we are building up upon. But we take those that we test, that we are certain we can handle, we can manage, and manage them in SUSE Manager. So if you are running Uyuni, you are familiar with all that list, and you may also have a few others that we support there. But those are the ones we support on the enterprise level. Managing, what does managing mean? I mean, you all have at one point or the other tried to get your system secure. You had to ask questions or you had to provide the answers to it. Is the infrastructure secure? Do we fulfill the compliance that we need? We had that in the fake mock-up with the AI scenario in the keynote, if you have seen it. And if you're leading, uh, looking later at the recording, it was about CO saying we are highly confidential, we have a regulated market, we need to be sure we want to help you to get that. That also means having that information and knowing you are secure is one thing. You also need to prove it. You need to do audits. You need to have reports for your, for your boss, for your boss boss, for the CIO, CSO, for the regulation office that comes to you. And you know. Linux is running in highly sensitive areas. We help you with that, we provide the reports, we provide a centralized control. And it's not just for one Linux, it's for all of them that you have seen. The good thing is, those of you who were earlier here, there was a session about automation and APIs, and we help you there with scheduling, with setting up maintenance windows, with doing automation. Let me recap the three main reasons. There are literally hundreds of features that are a good reason to go to SUSE Manager. And amazingly, they all start with the letter S. <laughs> you would think someone did that on yeah. purpose. I'm wondering who did this. <laughs> was it somebody called I, I think that was Stacy. 
<laughs> These are just a few ones. Let's be honest on that. Security, we talked about that. And you will most likely talk a little bit about in the what's new section there. You want to know what is going on. Am I secure? What patches do I need to apply? What vulnerabilities exist? that I have no patches for because my vendor has not released them yet. You want to do the open scap scanning to get your information there. And you want to be up to date and secure, not just for everything, but for everything that counts. And you want to decide, do I need to boot or do I not need to boot? We have live patching and the support in SUSE Manager for that so that you can stay up, secure, and keep your infrastructure running. And of course, knowing all that requires that you have monitoring, that you have reporting. It's there, it's mentioned here, and you see I'm not going through the list here as it is, but rather read it at home when you have the slide deck. It's small and it's just for me to have a little bit of, of words to say complexity. It's one thing that is in all of our minds. How complex things are sometimes. How problematic they are. Do I know how complex something is? In most cases, things that we think it's easy and simple are not. When I joined a few months back, this was a manager team, I was thinking, a simple, easy tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It suddenly I discovered there's uh, so many features, so many things, and you can do so many stuff with it. Simple and easy, that's what we want to achieve with it. You have the complexity there, but we try to make it easy for you to do the task. If you have sec 16 different Linux distribution, think about, I don't know how many you have at maximum, but I know of one customer who has at least five different. And each of them has a different way of updating, a different way of getting the information out, a different way of configuring. If I would remember all of them, if you're young, that might work. If you have a big note, that might work. But you need that sometimes in a hurry. So the manager takes that off you, makes it easy, makes it simple, provides the help there with patching, with using salt, with using Ansible. Yes, we support Ansible, a question that came up at the booth more often than not. We help you in that regard to also make sure that your content lifecycle management is controlled. If you have a development, a QA, a production environment, that you can move things, test things, and control when you enable something. And of course, we want to have that in all areas of scalability, be it from small devices, Slim Micro running on a small nook, like we have it in the booth, or on a big IBM set where you have to make sure that the elevator is able to carry it in the next floor. <laughs> scalability, we run, we manage all of that. We have the hub architecture that helps you to run a tremendous amount of devices. We have a customer that runs more than 100,000 machines managing through the hub architecture and the, through the manager servers. Think about that, 100,000. That's more than 100 times the m number of people we have here at the conference. That's a small city of people and it's managing it, it knows everything about it. And it's not taking ages to do the updates, but if you have set it up with the proxies, with the hub architecture, it's working fast. There are always a few constraints. Think about network, bandwidth, and anything else. And it's also working if you are in different locations, far spread over the world. We have it here, you can go, 100,000 devices, no problem. One caveat, don't connect them all to one instance of yeah. SUSE Manager. <laughs> that 
poor guy. It's like having a people sitting there and waiting for a hundred thousand people telling their name. Okay, can you repeat? Can you repeat? Yeah. <laughs> the other thing, you want to do your patches regularly. We had it with the paradox of patching in another session. A system that is critical, you want to have it patched regularly. But of course, it's critical. Patching is dangerous. And in worst case, you have to reboot a critical system. So you try to avoid that. And in the end, um, you want to have a solution for that. So we help you there with the content lifecycle management, where you can test before you go into production. We help you with the life, uh, with the life patching that avoids the rebooting. Also, in some regards, on the user space. But that's what makes it easy for you. And we have this 10 years for all of the Linux distributions we support. Caveat supply, live patching is not available for all because you need vendor support for that and everything else. If you need that and want that, I recommend to go with Slash where you have this. And to see what's new in the last few months and days and what's coming, Don will now show us. Great. Okay, so one time I was presenting and they had evaluation forms at the end and I got in trouble for informal polling. Somebody said, that guy asks us too many questions. Why is he doing that? So I'm going to start by asking you a question. <laughs> so how many of you are currently running SUSE Manager? Oh, group hug, group hug, <laughs> group hug. I love you. OK, so but how many of you are running SUSE Manager 5.0? See, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, Cedric. Yeah, okay, wow. So we're going to find out what's new in SUSE Manager 5.0. So this is an eye chart, and I'm not going to make you read this. And, you know, if, if I just read all the words on here, what's the point? I can just send you a PDF. You need more animation. You need more awesomeness, right? So really, that comes in three different categories. We continue our theme of multi-Linux management, and we add additional distributions. Um, we continue with compliance and security improvements in SUSE Manager. And one of the big things that's coming is integrated oval and uh, uh, adding some ability to get security patch or vulnerability awareness without simply looking at the patch update channels that we have replicated in SUSE Manager, which is the way that we get CVE information today. And then, uh, of course, sim trying to simplify and automate some of the things that we're doing by containerizing. So if you don't know already, SUSE Manager 5 is going to be delivered only in a <coughs> container, okay? So that's pretty far different from what you may be used to. And actually, I had several people say to me, you're forcing me to learn containers. <laughs> yeah, OK. So, But we're not forcing you in a hard way, because one of our principles, as Miguel will tell you, is the principle of least annoyance. That doesn't mean no annoyance. <laughs> After all, they invited me to speak. <laughs> and I'm kind of annoying. But by the principle of least annoyance, when we take you to containers, we're not making you learn Kubernetes yet. Uh, and we're masking some of the complexity underneath Podman, uh, which is the runtime that SUSE Manager 5 uses, by giving you tools to be able to make the most of SUSE Manager even in that containerized environment. And we're giving you images to do deploys. So instead of starting from an ISO with the SLES ISO and installing the operating system bits and going through all of that, you can begin with an image, much like we've already done with hyperscalers for a number of years by delivering server images. And we'll also be delivering proxy images. And we'll be doing it on multiple architectures as well. So uh, 
obviously, if you need some assistance in getting your SUSE manager from 4X to 5, or if you're starting with a new one, uh, Global Services is here, and we have one of the best SUSE manager Global Services peoples right here in the back, Anne Marie, and she's, uh, she's done it so many times with some of our largest customers, just a fabulous time. So if you need to do your migration for SUMA 5 or you want to start from scratch, our consulting services are a great place to start. <clears throat> so let's talk about containerization and what we've done with the SUSE manager in that space. So both the server now and the proxy server will be delivered only in containers. So I know you all are, you know, some of you are, have your arms folded and are looking at me kind of fuzzy, but we're get, we'll get through this, right? It's going to be okay. <laughs> so the reasons why we're doing this, depends on like, why are you doing this? Apart from the fact that this is the, a modern way of application delivery is we were trying to make it simple and easier even for non-container users to be able to use to try to create some independence from the host operating system. So previously in SUSE Manager, if you upgrade a package on the host operating system, which might be Apache or Tomcat, which is used internally in SUSE Manager, there could be potential challenges for integration with, with this software that we're delivering. So we're creating some sense of independence and separation there between application and OS. And it's more modular and resilient. So you'll see some of that uh, tonight in, in Demo Palooza if you stick around for that. <laughs> And then obviously dependency management because we're building using the base container image for the SUSE manager software. So we're not pulling dependencies from libraries on the host OS. So this is kind of what it looks like. We run SUSE manager 5.0 is going to run on SLE micro 5.5. Uh, SLE micro is, is, how many of you have used SLE micro in production already? Just a few, right? So we get to give you the opportunity to have a reason to use SLE Micro, <laughs> right? Uh, that too, and always SUSE Manager has included the operating system bits and not required a separate subscription for that. And likewise, this continues with SUSE Manager 5 that we are going to give you a subscription for SLE Micro uh, included in your SUSE Manager entitlement. So we'll run it on top of Podman runtime, and it uses systemd to start these things. And it's a single container for now for the SUSE manager server. Although you'll see delivered, we already have some other additional containers. There's two additional ones right now. We have one for confidential compute attestation, which is our first foray into that confidential compute uh, arena. It's an early release. And secondly, we actually are using a container to do Postgres migration. So there's some interesting plays that we're starting to do with containers, and we have the ability now with the Podman runtime and systemd to be able to do that. And we're delivering you a couple of tools for you to administrate it with. MGR ADM, which is like an administration tool uh, for installing, updating, migrating, uh, and this is what you will use if you're coming from the 4.3 that you already have into 5.0, and then MGRCTL to try to run tasks inside the container itself. So, and this way, we're not making you learn the guts of Podman and all of those things. So when you run MGRADM and you install it, it takes care of provisioning the volumes and assigning the network ports through to the container. <clears throat> when you upgrade from 4.3 to 5, it is no, not in place, okay? So 
you have to build a new server and okay i mean i know i know you guys are smart enough to think through this but it should be at least as big as the 43 server okay <laughs> don't think oh i'm going to be able to shrink my footprint now i can make it half as big don't try to do that okay so make a new SUSE Manager 5 server, not in place, and then you run MGR ADM migrate and it transfers all the data over and at the end of the process, change the DNS to be the same name because that certificate in SUSE Manager, as you guys know, is what gets distributed to all your registered clients so they know who to talk to. So at the end, once it's complete, you wouldn't have to re-register all your systems and all your data is moved over from 4.3. Okay, we have a question already. Uh, okay, so you can change it and shut off the other one and use the same IP address if you want to. Your minions use the IP maybe for registration, but the, are they using the IP in the certificate? Yeah, so FQDN, right? So it's simple, it's safe, and it's efficient because if something goes wrong or I run out of time, I haven't destroyed the original one, right? Uh, what, one of the things we're going to do yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can yeah, come by the booth and we'll we'll discuss that more later. Uh so one of the things we're planning to do uh hopefully with a future maintenance update and I'm not going to commit you on this one to be the first one is to try to split that so you can do the rsync part first without taking the original server offline. And then at the end, when you do the real migration and migrate the whole thing, the timeline will be compressed significantly for that. And we have our architect here in the front row, Ricardo, uh, who I, I've tasked with, uh, actually he and Cedric. Cedric was like, I'm going on vacation. I don't have time to write this, uh, but I love you. Okay, so the proxy changes a little bit. Now for two years, we have offered the proxy in containers, both as a Podman container and even in Kubernetes. So there's a Helm chart to deploy the SUSE manager proxy. So, okay, question number two, and don't ding me for informal polling, all right? So how many of you are running the proxy in containers right now? That's what I thought. I love you, but boy, you know, now you're not going to have a choice. Sorry. <laughs> choice happens, but not here. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, he's laughing. Don't no. let that hear your boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so... Uh, we give you Slee Micro and we give you Podman and we give you a nice tool, MGR Proxy, to actually set up the proxy containers. But a Proxy, unlike the SUSE Manager server, actually has five containers. Uh, and we've been running this, well, we built this two years ago, but you haven't run it yet. You're going to get to run this when you deploy your new, new proxies for SUSE Manager 5. So it's the same functionally, uh, but we deliver it obviously in containers. And we're again going to be building images for those so you can deploy container from an image, especially this is important in an air-gapped environment where you may not have internet to pull the container images down. They're already in the pre-built images for the proxy. So roadmap, let's talk about uh, where the timeline is. And some of you, uh, there's already been some concerns raised about this, but we'll talk about it. So, 
SUSE Manager Forta 2 support ended last October. Okay. How many of you, okay, this is an embarrassing one. You may not feel comfortable. How many of you are running a SUSE Manager older than 4.3? No one's willing to raise their hand. But we actually had someone last week ask us, how do I migrate from SUSE Manager 4.0? And that hasn't been supported for a number of years. But the support for this one ended. If you still have 4.2, you need to get it to 4.3 before you can migrate. So we initially launched uh, SUSE Manager 4.3 back in 2022. And the, as of today, the, uh, the end of life for SUSE Manager 4.3 is uh, June of next year. We're launching SUSE Manager 5 next month. Uh, this is the official announcement uh, here at SUSECon, uh, but first customer ship is expected in mid-July. It's less than 30 days, so I can officially say that without, without worrying. And it's going good. Uh, so you'll actually see it here. Yeah, oh, yeah knocking. Who's that knocking? Somebody knocking. Uh, SUSE Manager 5.1 will come next year in mid-2025. And uh, we're not going to tell you all that's in that yet. Uh, we're still hashing some of that stuff out. But um, we're looking at doing some real uh, refining of the tools and taking all that we've learned from our first foray into containerization and, and making it an even stronger and better product uh, mid of next year. So, and then obviously we'll try to do some annual releases and the target is for 5.2 to be in 2026, but that's pretty far off. So now it's time for a demo. So um, I'm logging into a SUSE manager server at my house. So uh, I hope, you, hope you're happy with that. Um, so... As you can see, it looks very similar to what we've had before. So I'm going to show you some key differences in what we're doing with SUSE Manager 5, things that were not there in 4.3. <clears throat> so for a long time, we have supported Red Hat distributions in SUSE Manager. As you know, Red Hat made some changes in how their repositories are structured and how their updates are delivered. So unlike SUSE distributions where we have lots and lots of channels, so if I look at my SLES 15 SP6 system, I have quite a number of child channels and repositories, a lot, right? So this is a lot. Uh, Red Hat attempted to make it so there were fewer of those repositories and to in fact change how their uh, those repositories are handled. And here's an EL clone as an example, uh, Rocky Linux 9. You can see this is a lot shorter list, right? But what happened was they, they created the concept of modularity uh, and delivered in an app stream channel. So anytime you see an app stream channel, in SUSE Manager previously, we did not have facility to manage that metadata. So what we had to do was flatten it out. So if you did not apply a filtered set of channels previously for an EL distribution in SUSE Manager, it would have this yucky yellow warning banner up here that what you see in SUSE Manager might not match what's on the system. So DNF is the update tool for EL distributions, and it didn't always align with SUSE Manager. But now, magically, the yucky yellow banner is not there anymore. And why is this? Because some really amazing people, including someone who's right here at SUSECon, Chan, um, has helped to create a new thing called App Streams right built into SUSE Manager. So you can see here App Streams. So we're going to take a look at that 
And this is an example from an EL9 distribution where I, yeah, you can applaud, yeah. Hey, wow. So isn't this great, right? So this is actually, I've been told anecdotally, it's nicer than some other vendors handling of app streams, okay? So, <coughs> so this one, you can see I have different choices for different streams within the modules, and I've chosen uh, PostgreSQL 16, so it masks for me the PostgreSQL 15 things. So when I wanna go install PostgreSQL on this system, so I'm going to go to software and install, and I type Postgres in here. I even get a nice view of this that shows me now this is, this is interesting. And if I hover over it, it will tell me AppStream module PostgreSQL 16. So it's telling me even in the installation process that I'm using uh, a module. And I don't see PostgreSQL 15 offered in here and I don't, so it hides that from me and integrates directly with SUSE Manager. If I wanna add a different module in AppStreams, I can simply select it. So if I'm gonna pick Nginx124 and apply the changes and confirm, it will schedule the event just like any other scheduled event in SUSE Manager. And you can see it's already changed it and now is applying a package list refresh. So this is a new feature for us. We're just getting started with it, but you can see it's already pretty usable and kind of cool if you do EL things like Liberty Linux, maybe. Eight or nine will have modules. Seven didn't have modules. That's part of the reason why I sent to S7 lasted as long as it has because people have avoided having to understand this. I asked somebody one time, how many people in the world understand Red Hat app streams? Uh, how many of you in here have a really great handle on Red Hat app streams? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Miguel was gonna raise his hand, but then he avoided it, right? <laughs> Okay, and one other thing I wanted to show you in the demo for SUSE Manager 5 that we've spent some time on, and again, a developer that's here at SUSECon helped to make this happen is the system list, okay? If you have hundreds or thousands of systems in SUSE Manager 4.3, this is, takes a while for it to even generate the system list. And what we've done is make this an indexed list that every minute gets refreshed inside of SUSE Manager. So it's, it can be sorted and dynamic and much faster. So, <clears throat> so uh, for example, previously you could only sort by system name, but now I can click on the head of a column like patches and get the sort of all of them. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't wait three hours before it generates your 5,000 system list anymore, right? So lots of cool things that you can do here just with column headers, or you can do something like this dropdown, which never existed before where I can do a uh, system kind, right? So here's an example. So if I wanna pick just my proxies. <laughs> it's kind of sexy, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. So uh, another thing that you might find interesting is base channel. So if I only wanna see systems of a certain base channel like SLE, or if I only want to see, I, all I have to do is type SLE, and you can see now it's already sorted just the, the, the cool SUSE systems. 
Those other ones you can do too, but I thought this one was more cooler. <laughs> <clears throat> so a number of things that you can do with this, and probably the, the most, one of the most common ones is if a reboot is required, right? So I can do, uh, yes, the reboot is required. I only have one system, and it's not checking in right now because I tried to find that VM in my, in my hypervisor, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, or, or no, right? Which is ob should obviously be the rest of them, but because it's kind of binary, requires reboot. But what happened was previously you had to choose from some of these things way over here on the side of the menu. It was sort of awkward and ugly. <laughs> um, and obviously not indexed like this is. So it's gonna give you a more immediate response time. And hopefully, one of the reasons why we chose this as something to work on is because how many people using SUSE Manager use the system list? 100%, right? So trying to work on features that are gonna have the broadest impact obviously is one that's fun for us too. Okay, I think I'm done actually. So uh, one more thing, since I do have a couple more minutes, let me make sure that I can do this. I'm gonna, yeah, this again is uh, Don going off script, so, so hang on here. I'm gonna go into the actual containerized SUSE manager and show you some of the volume guts, okay? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you think I should do this? Yes. If you don't do it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. Okay, so this is my, this is my SUSE manager server. And again, I built it from, um, like that? Thank you. Yeah, better, hopefully. So again, I built this one from the image that we delivered for SUSE Manager. So if I do a zipper SE minus SI of image, okay, this will tell, shows me the, the uh, packages that were included for SUSE Manager on this box. So here's the SUSE Manager server image. Now, if I don't use the image, it's going to pull it from uh, registry.susa.com and pull the container image down. But in our images, we pre-populate it with whatever the image was at the time. So that way, if you need to install in an air-gapped environment, it doesn't try to go to the internet and pull it down and, and all of that. So those are the images that are installed. Also, I have, um, I have the MGR tools. So MGR ADM and MGR CTL are already installed in the image for you to make use of. So um, my, my files, this particular one, let's see. So what do I have for disk space usage? So the, the image is 20 gig by default and it's BTRFS. So <clears throat> this is what's running SLE Micro underneath. But I have this single SUSE manager mount point here under var lib container storage volumes. So this is where I'm putting all of my data that previously you had to map for a var spacewalk, a var lib pgsql, var cache rhn, all of those bulky things that SUSE manager adds, uh, we put them all into, into here. And we make, let the installation tool give you, <coughs> give you the volume mappings automatically so you don't have to do this yourself. This is part of what, uh, 
this is part of what MGR ADM is doing in the install. It's mapping these things, uh, which we spent a lot of time figuring out what needs to persist in a SUSE manager server, because now I've made it so I update the containers and what's in the container delivery is different from what I've created as my own data and I want to keep that separated. So doing that was a not simple process. <laughs> but we've created all these, all these uh, persistent volumes that enable you to go forward. Yes. Um, do you will support an NFS link to this directly? Because I have customers, they use an NFS storage for the big data that they have to store there and it's not part of the yeah, virtual machine that's running. Okay, data. Uh, good question. Um, and hopefully I give you the right answer. We do, if your NFS is freaking fast, right? Don't do this on NFS to a bunch of spinning drives on a 10-year-old server because you will hate yourself really fast. Uh, <coughs> because it, it really does best if it's SSD or NVMe type storage because you, you got PostgreSQL read right into this thing. You got a lot of the same stuff that you have going on in SUSE Manager with 4.3. So if I do a, like a top here, you can, you can still see some of the threads like Java and Postgres. So it's doing some of the same processes that it was before. If you make that over a network, now you've got to account for the potential latency that might be introduced. The answer is yes, you can, but whether, whether it becomes so performance impacting that you can't stand it or not uh, is another good, good question. And now we've got Cedric. I uh, also wanted to, to add to that uh, answer. There is a script a tool that is shipped in the image to let you pass in whatever disk device you have. So it could be um, NFS, it could be um, whatever, and then use it as a mount. So it's just, it just takes a path and mounts it in the proper place for you, and that's it. It could be an iSCSI disk, it could be whatever. Yeah, so the point and part of that is is to make it so that the experience is going to be very similar regardless of where you deploy. So we had the SUMA storage script. If you've ever installed SUSE Manager in a hyperscaler, that existed from our cloud team. And now we're adopting that same one to deliver for SUSE Manager on-premises also so that that experience will align very similarly. And this is how we're managing storage in the public cloud. We recommend a single large disk, and we map that to where it needs to be on the SUSE manager server. And with that, I think we've used up all of our time. And I want to say, oh, yes, Cedric? There's a thing that I'm surprised you didn't mention that is a big change in 5.0. There is no more traditional stack. Oh, yes, I, uh, I've been very famous about uh, saying this. You know, if you're still running RHN check and OSA D and Jabber, please stop <laughs> and because we won't support it anymore. But it does make, we've made the code a lot leaner and faster. We've got a new version of Java. I think you'll be very pleased with SUSE Manager 5. And thank you for your time today. Yeah, okay, one more question. Oh, go ahead, you're next. Um, yeah. yeah, with the Slee Micro 6 also being announced, I'm curious as to why SUSE Manager 5 <coughs> is on Slee Micro 5 rather yeah, than 6. Yeah, I, I love you too, man. But, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, Miguel, you want to answer this or do you want me? Do you let, trust let me? Let me answer this yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I'm the new guy. I can't be blamed by everybody. Uh, keep in mind, 
6.0 came out now. Developing that thing on a complete under development being OS is something that is a nuisance. If you change the application from going bare metal to container and you have at the same time a operating system below that changes on a daily weekly base because 6.0 and 5.5 have complete different packages, setups and a lot of changes inside. That's a nuisance. We wanted to have high quality when it comes out, so we go with 5.5. You have a long lifetime of 5.5, Slim Micro 5.5, so that's not a problem. We will switch to the Slim Micro 6 series with 5.1. So this is coming, but we want to be on a system where we have a little bit of stability and not run into the problem where we have to think, is it now us doing it wrong, or is it the operating system, or is it both? We support it as a client, yeah. so no worry on that. Yeah, and the second answer is life cycle. So if you, it, since most of you haven't run C Micro before, it has a four-year life cycle. So C Micro 5.5 is going to be around for the whole life cycle of SUSE Manager 5.0, and so we have no problems in getting the OS updates for the container host underneath. Yeah, question, last question. Oh, but I have two questions. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you very much for, for the great talk, and I'm not working for SUSE, so... That's oh, a, okay. <laughs> um, are there improvements about the lifecycle management, especially about the, the filters, because we find it very hard to bring the CVEs to the software stages itself. Is there some improvement, or...? Yes, um, in fact, the... One of the most annoying things ever is if you've ever created CLM filters and you have more than a few, is that they previously were unsorted and unsearchable. So you had to sort of cheat and use the browser find in order to even get there. Well, they fixed that. Yeah! Great, thank you. Yeah, so now it's actually sorted. And a short so second question. Cool. Um, yeah. Is there, meanwhile, a way that, is, that brings you to the point that the software is automatically promoted from, from the testing environment to the production systems? Because meanwhile, we have to do this uh, via AP calls. Okay. It works, but it would be nice if there's something. Yeah, out so of the right now there is no automated promotion, and we did not include that in SUSE Manager 5. But um, there's lots of ways to script that and automate that on your own. Um, but yeah, good questions, both of them. Thank, right, you. thank you. And keep in mind, we have the booth still open for yes. a few hours. So come by, come by, watch. There's more small details, big details. And yep. also feel free to bring up your suggestions and improvement requests. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.